We're out in our field situation here today, working on a continuation of our pointing dog woe drills. We've done many yard drills of teaching the woe command in an environment of repetition and consistency so the dogs clearly understand the use of a woe command verbally and the reinforcement with the e-collar or remote electronic training collar around their be bellies to create a tickle sensation to get the woe command. So now we've moved on to do some field training here. And we've got some birds placed in boxes. And this drill is called a two bird drill. I learned this drill about 10 years ago from friend and wonderful dog trainer, Brian Hayes. And the purpose of this drill is to put multiple birds down, not just one bird, but multiple birds so that we could give it a dual flush. And I love this drill because it works off the dog's genetic senses. They smell the bird. I can flush the bird. And often a dog wants to go ahead and chase. But if I can quickly reestablish to the dog, hey, there's another bird there, then that genetic feature goes in with that automatic, hopefully, point with the dogs, and they continue to point that second bird. So their genetic point, we'll call it, overrides their desire to chase that bird, and it also helps me with my training. Instead of me having to enforce the woe command, they want to continue pointing because common sense, there's another bird there. So I think that this is a fantastic drill to work with our pointing dogs. Um, Again, this is going on to our field drills. This is not working with a puppy the first time. We're going to be working a dog, a trained dog, for the purposes of filming. She's a great dog to show this drill to. I'll be able to reinforce the woe command, and we'll show what a two-bird drill is all about. I've got our two birds camouflaged, set for the dogs to work on in the field. This is a scent drill of our two-bird drill, and I'm going to go ahead and call in uh, our trained dog, Elsie, our master hunter, a great demonstration dog for the purposes of learning the two bird drill. Elsie, here. And a girl. Good. Where's a bird? Fine bird. Perfect. Whoa. Gave a little movement. Now I'm ready to reinforce if needed. She gave a little, little movement. She caught me a little off guard. And Elsie is a little close to these birds. Now for a trained dog, I don't mind this. But when we have a young dog, I'm more comfortable with the young dog of moving them back some. Again, with her, because I know she's pretty steady, I'm going to be okay. But it's it's also okay to give pick them up and just move them back a little bit. That way I don't flush these birds right in her face because I would like her to be successful in this drill. So a two bird drill means I have two birds down here. I'm ready with my e-collar to reinforce the woe command, the woe of the e-collar around her belly. Good. And what I'll do now is kick up at the grass a little bit to get her a little excited about a possible flush. And I know the birds are here. I don't have to look at the birds. This is little tip up boxes. I wanna make sure I keep an eye on my dog. I want to make sure that I'm ready, that if she so much as takes a step, I reinforce whoa with a tickle. Now, the neat thing about this drill is she's expecting one bird to be here. So here's the one bird that she's expecting. And if you watch, she's following that bird. A young dog might try to chase that bird, and I'd reinforce the whoa. Now, watch how I can re-intensify her and sort of trick her. Ella, it's not tricking her. There's another bird here. So it helps with their genetic response to point automatically because that scent factor just came in. Now there's another bird. So this is going to help keep her in the woe position. Good. And if I start to kick again, she might even expect another bird. So there is a little bit of trickery I'll call here in that instead of just one bird with the dog chasing the one bird, by trying to reestablish there could be a, a, a covey of birds here, it helps to keep her on that woe command. Good girl. And she did a nice job with this. Her fault was she did hover right over top of these birds. Again, she's, she's very well trained. I can flush birds underneath her belly, 
but it's not something that I recommend doing with a young dog. I would like this drill to be successful with a young dog. So moving them back a little distance is okay. You can also practice this drill with a check cord on. In that case, I do like there to be a second person gently holding the dog to reinforce the woe command because it, t it teaches the dogs it's a little bit of a common sense drill. Instead of them wanting to chase, common sense is, hey, there's another bird here. And they want to continue pointing that bird. So I'm going to move her on because we have a next series of birds fairly close, again, for the purposes of demonstration. I'm going to know her off that. No, leave it. Elsie, fine bird. Whoa. There she is right on top of these birds. And she is on top of these birds again. I'm going to go ahead and move her back because I don't want my dogs on top of these birds. It's not good for a teaching circumstance for the dogs. So I'm just going to gently lift her and move her back. Whoa. Style her up a little again. Good. So with the two birds... I want her to always be expecting that there could be another bird there. Therefore, I do not want you to chase the bird. I don't like to work dogs with just one bird in the field because it really does give them the opportunity to expect one bird and chase one bird. This drill teaches patience and the expectation that there could be more than one bird there. I could do some gunshot with this drill. I'll kick around a little. If she gives a movement, I'm going to reinforce my woe command with the e-collar tickle around the belly. A drill that we've taught through many, many, many repetitions and that she's completely comfortable with. She can mark it. That's okay. But she's not moving. And now I want to get her attention right back. Maybe she just got a whiff of this bird. We got her intensity back on the point. And here's our two-bird drill. You were right. There's a second one. Good. So she's even waiting here for a third one. And I could put a third bird down. So this drill is such a fantastic drill because it does teach the dog patience. It teaches them that there could be another bird here. Have some patience. Don't go right into chase mode. Uh, a great way to reinforce your woe commands. I think that it's really important to understand balance in your training program. If all I did was two bird drills then this dog might lose her marking capability or desire to actually watch the first bird go. It's important to do drills and then shoot birds over the dog. Uh, it's important to give a variety of drills so the dogs don't just expect a two-bird drill all the time, whoa, and they become accustomed to that, and then you can lose that style. They can always be anticipating something else. So Maybe tomorrow with her, I'll go ahead and I'll do a one-bird drill and I'll shoot some birds over her. Or I'll do a two-bird drill and I'll actually shoot the second bird for her. But a two-bird drill is a great way to teach the dogs to anticipate that there could be more birds there. To help keep them on their point command, on their woe command, because they genetically are naturally doing it. Plus, I'm enhancing it with my training program. Good luck with your two-bird drills.